So again, welcome everyone. Welcome uh, all, all of us who are online and here in person. So um, again, today's topic is we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about water baptism as we're gonna, and, and then we're going to baptize two of our uh, beloved friends here, Jan and Aaron. Such a great privilege and honor. Aaron is actually a, a recent convert. So we praise God for that. Uh, and Jan has been growing in the Lord. And she's going to share her testimony a little bit after this too. So you will have time to listen to their testimonies as well. So Lord bless this sermon and we love you Jesus. Uh, what is water baptism? And uh, you know a, a lot of people get caught up on that. Uh, so water baptism in the Old Testament. What, what uh, people used to, de used to do uh, when... Um, they entered in, when Judaism started to be practiced, they would um, circumcise the children. And uh, the circumcision of the children would be a, um, a way of kind of honoring that new covenant that Israel was. And so uh, that's what they do. So when you think of the war baptism, it's kind of a similar fashion where we are baptized in the water and, and this is a form of declaration. You're making a declaration that you belong to Jesus. You're making a declaration publicly to people around you as a witness that you have chosen yourself to uh, be baptized in the water as a sign that you are going to follow Jesus. And others will see it. Not only people will see it, but also in heavenly realm, where the Father is seated, angels and even devils will see and will be a witness that you are sealed. You are sealed in Christ Jesus and the Spirit lives in you. And that you are doing this as a ceremony. You know, uh, uh, think of a, of a marriage. You know, you meet your person, you fall in love, and your life is going so well, you want to marry this person, and uh, um, so you have a marriage. Marriage is not, it's just a ceremony. It's not really, marriage is not the end of all, but it's a ceremony that you're celebrating this marriage, and you're making like a more of a deeper covenant with this, uh, um, with your uh, spouse. To continue in the same way, water baptism is in a similar fashion. It's not all means of it, but it's a, a symbol, a ceremony of of that. And and um, and so um, that's what it is. So we're, we're working with this camera, so it's not okay. Good. Thank you for that. Yeah. So. Uh, it, it is also an instruction when Jesus, Matthew 28, 19, 20 says, Therefore go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will, I am with you always to the very end of the, of the age. That's more important actually than Amen. baptism itself, that Jesus is always with us. But it's a form of instruction that is given to us by Jesus as well. That we uh, ought to uh, be baptized as a sign of repentance. And when I became myself personally, my own testimony, and, and Aaron and uh, Jan are going to say it their own. You know, I, I was filled with the Holy Spirit uh, um, a year before I was baptized, actually. Water baptism. And um, I was in San Francisco. Always San Francisco comes up. And I was reading a, a, a gospel, a Ma Mark's gospel, actually. And the Lord said to me, you, uh, go and be baptized, water baptism. And I said, okay, sir, I'm going to do that. And so what happened is then, um, you can see when God calls, He orchestrates things, things ahead. And so uh, the church that we were helping in that time was YWAM. It was a black Baptist, Af uh, black American, African, whatever is the new political term, church, church, people of God, doesn't really matter. Uh, and so uh, they, uh, uh, it was a charismatic Baptist church. And so, and they were scheduled to have baptism 
the, the week that the Lord spoke to me. And so I said, hey, sign me in. I want to be water baptized too. And so I was um, baptized myself. It was a good experience. And the Lord was there. So uh, uh, when we do that, you see, the, the mystery in the gospel is this. When we do that, it's a way also. It's not only a ceremony. It's a way of also of uh, letting go of the old you. The old you is being washed, is being gone. And then Christ is raising through the resurrected power of Jesus Christ a new of you. So you're, the old is going, is being buried. Amen. The new is coming. Yes. And it's done the work of the Spirit. So, and then if Jen uh, and, and Aaron and all of us, you know, when the enemy then will come and, and, and shoot arrows at us and say, well, you, sh you are not a good Christian because you remember when you did that? Do you remember when you did this and that? Then the duty of us is this. That person is dead. Amen. We just buried that person in baptism, the war of baptism. It's gone. That person is dead. That Jan who committed or Aaron those things or Remy, it's gone. You want to see the grave? Go see it there in, at Remy's uh, uh, backyard. <laughs> that person is buried there. Come on, Pastor. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. This is a new person. And you have no power or authority to come against this person because this is a temple of Jesus Christ. Do you want to mess with him? No, you don't. I know that. But so uh, we become confident of who we are. And so baptism is a way again to witness. You are declaring this newness, this mystery in Jesus Christ that the old is gone. The new has entered. No more condemnation for you. No more guilt for you. No more weakness haunting you at night. Because you are a new person. I don't feel like that. It doesn't matter how you feel. It matters what God says. He is the creator of reality. If he says this is how I think you are, and you should believe that. This is who I am because God says this is who I am. And the truth will set you free. And where does the truth come from? Jesus. Jesus is the truth. And the scripture says the truth will set you free. Powerful, Jenna. Huh? Yeah, good, good. <laughs> so, um, uh, but that is, is, then Romans 6, 3, 5 confirms this. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, you see, it's not about baptism, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too, you, Jen, and Aaron, and me, Remy, the worst of all, may live a new life. May live a new life. Yes, dear. I would be negligent as a Christian if I didn't mention this to you. I studied about baptism, baptism as well, and I found out there's two more baptisms. There's a baptism of desire and a baptism of blood. The baptism of blood is when you when you go to the service and you die, and that's another that's another baptism. You can't you can't be right where the water is but you're baptized in blood. And also baptism of desire. You wish to be baptized in water, but you're, it's not available. Oh, okay. And well, that's just as well, good. Well, thank you, uh, Margie, uh, for that. Yeah, uh, we'll talk more about that later. How's that? And, yeah, and so... Um, 
so then the scripture says, For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resu- resurrection like his. And when, this, uh, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he poured out his spirit, his resurrected spirit in all of us. So now in Christ Jesus, we, are, we have the ability and the possibility to do what he used to do. Because you are a new person. Not an old person. You are something new. And, and God is raising us up to become more and more like Him in the newness of His Spirit. And less and less of that dead uh, person. We don't want to raise the, the dead, uh, of our, our dead, you know, because we will be in them like zombies. You know what I mean? Very... If we, if, if we go back and say, I've been baptized and go back and live the old lifestyle, it's just like being a zombie. You know, you're raising a, a body that is dead, uh-huh. but it's just like, it's not dead, it's not alive, you know. But when once we made, make that declaration, we want to live fully into the Lord, looking up ahead, not what was back, but what's in the ahead of our head. Not looking what has happened to our past and, and, and things like that. Because when we do that, we become a stumbling block to the present. It's not helping you anything. It's not helping me anything. It's not helping anyone. We now focus on the future. What's ahead of us? And we walk the present looking at the future. With the vision of the future. No more vision of the past. Our present walk is done in hope what is coming in the future. What is God preparing for us? And we uh, mourn and we weep and we celebrate and we rejoice for what God has in front of us. We focus on that vision. And move ahead. A new Jan, a new Aaron, a new Reed. And um, I will leave now some time for Jan and Aaron. They will share a little bit their testimonies. And uh, then we're going to pray for them uh, uh, as a sign of filling them with the Holy Ghost, with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And then we're going to chill, put them, dunk them there in the chilly water. And if seculars will see that, say, what, is, what kind of occult is this? What, is this pe- what are these people doing? Poor people, look at them, torturing them outside there. Yeah, well, I'm glad I'm not being baptized today. Oh, you're getting in yeah. there, too. Oh, no. oh, I said it. I said it. I'm in trouble. Who wants to go first? Okay, Aaron. Let me move this. Watch those cables. Don't trip yourself. Okay. Okay. Mo- wait, it's still in your pocket, Randy. <laughs> okay, I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. Um, wounds lead to infections, scars lead to testimony. Um, last year, I wasn't the person I am today. Um, I might cry, I'm very emotional. Um, I was full of sin. Um, I had I had a great life. I had two wonderful jobs. Um, I was having fun. A normal 27-year-old would do. Going out, drinking, having, you know, a good time. Not having a care in the world. But worst of all, I didn't have God in my life. I didn't know who he was. 
and I didn't know what he could do for me. So as I was working 70 hours a week, going out and doing what a normal 27 year old would do, coming home one morning, I had a panic attack on the highway. I thought it was dying. My body got warm. I had no idea what was going on. My heart was pounding. I was on the phone with 911 screaming. And from that day, for about six months, I had panic attacks every day. I quit my jobs. I quit leaving my house. I couldn't function. My family was worried about me. My friends were worried about me. Um, but I had a very good friend through this, and his name is Tom. Some of you might know him. Um, he came to me, and he told me, maybe you should try church. Maybe you should, maybe you should try to open the Bible. And I did that. I started going to a local church in my town, and it just wasn't reaching me. It was there, but it wasn't enough. Um, but I feel like that day God said, that's it. You need to, you need to calm yourself down because you're, you're going to end up not here anymore. So God did completely change my life. Um, and then Tom suggested the lighthouse church because I told him that my church just wasn't reaching me. And when I got to lighthouse church, there was an amazing pastor there, Pastor Remy. Remy reached me so much. His words and just the way he preached and everything was just amazing to me. Um, he gave me his phone number. We talked about things, my anxiety, my, my heart problems that I have. He prayed for me. He prayed with me. He told me any anytime, anything I needed, I could call him. He was just a phone call away. Um... Now today, since February, I haven't had a panic attack. Um, I barely drink alcohol. I mean, maybe one or two in the last year. Um, I don't go out. I work. I have an amazing job. Um, I help people with disabilities. Um, and it's a passion of mine. Um, and I feel that God put me there for a reason. He has a plan for me, just like he has a plan for you. Amen. And today, and just like last year, I accept God as my Lord and Savior. I will wash away my sins and become a new me. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to read my favorite verse that got me through most of my anxiety. Um, it's Isaiah 41.10. If, if you ever have fear, anxiety, worry, heartache, remember this verse. I remember this every day and it reminds me I am not alone. I have the best doctor and counselor anyone could have and that is God. Amen. And I don't have the verse, but I need the verse in my phone. I'm trying to remember it like by heart, but it's hard. Okay, Isaiah 41, 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold, uphold you with my righteous right hand. And God is doing that, and he continues to do that in my life forever. Thank you. Let's, let's pray for you, Aaron. Let's just pray for her. Let's just pray quickly for Aaron. Well, let me put it here, I guess, since I'm praying. Yeah, join with me, church. 
Jesus, we thank you for Aaron. Thank you, Father, that she is beautiful inside and out, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that call that you have placed into her, Lord. Thank you for saving her, Lord. Aaron, I pray for you and you of you in Jesus' name. I pray that you will sense the power and the presence of God moving in you, renewing you. No more anxieties, no more attacks. Lord, I pray for a fullness. I pray for prosperity, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the plans that you have for her are good. A good plans to prosper, declares the Lord. I pray, Father, that the fire of your Holy Ghost will continue to be in her, Jesus, in her heart. May it burn with sensation, Lord. May, may she be, Lord Jesus, filled with you, Lord. May your Holy Spirit baptize her, Lord Jesus, a fresh new Lord. May she be a witness, not only uh, for her own benefit, Lord, but to others, to see that the Lord is alive. The Lord is alive, and He lives in her, and He is making her life better, slowly but surely better. I pray for a future uh, spouse too, Lord, for her. I pray that you will uh, be with her in that area, Lord, at the right time. The right person will come. I pray for unity with her uh, children and prosperity in her work, Lord, and that you are making things new in, in her, Lord, not only inside but outside. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. God loves you. Now you, Jan, you can come and um, share what's in your heart. That was beautiful. Loved it. And Jen, yours is going to be beautiful too. Come here, Jen. <laughs> well, be, be careful, Miles, what you promise to people. Here we go, Jen. Go ahead. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm sure most of us present here today remember the songs from the 70s called Me and You and a Dog Named Boo. Well, my testimony today is about me and you and a dog named Atina. And I'm sure some of you here recollect my, my testimony from the Lighthouse Church earlier this year, how I was an only child and my mom's caregiver for eight years old, went for, for eight years, I was her caregiver. My dear mother, she... She went home to be with the Lord last year in 2019, in March. And at that time, I had an old German Shepherd, old dog, as Pastor Remy referred her to. And she kept me going. Not Maggie, though. Not Maggie, though. Maggie. <laughs> her name was Quenna, and she passed away in April of this year, and and I was devastated. I've had German Shepherd dogs my whole life, seven to be exact. But for the first time in my life, I was alone in that house. Nobody to take care of, nobody to talk to. Of course, I would talk to God and pray because he was always there. But the enemy kept dragging me down. And I mean really dragging me down. Um, I started to get very, very depressed. And many people could see the sadness in me and they kept telling me, Jan, you need to get another dog. You need to get another dog. And my response was adamant. And I'd say, no, it hurts too much. It's too painful when you lose a beloved pet. So a few months went by, I began contemplating about getting another puppy. I prayed about it, and nobody 
including Pastor Remy. Nobody except me and God knew that if I got another puppy, I was going to name her Athena. And this is when God started to really intervene. My favorite band from the early 70s was, and still, The Who. They wrote a song called Athena, which I hadn't heard 25, 30 years. And one day in June, I was listening to the radio and that song was played. And I thought, wow, what a coincidence. And I heard it played again a few days later. And I kept hearing the Holy Spirit in my head saying to me, Athena, Athena. And I thought, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do here? So I turned on my computer and I reached, researched a couple German Shepherd websites. And one site in particular jumped right out at me. It was called Watchmen German Shepherds. And there was a picture on that webpage that showed the breeder his wife, and their two children holding German Shepherd puppies. But what really caught my eye, what really captured my attention, was what I saw in the background of this website. A huge picture was on their wall that said, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. So the Holy Spirit kept telling me to call this number on the website. And I did. I talked to the breeder. I told him, I need a puppy ASAP. And he said, well, I have two litters of German puppies here. But they're all sold, and they're all accounted for in advance. But he said, I might be willing to part with a young female puppy that has been imported from Europe and find her a forever loving home. But he needed to pray about it first. So to make a long story short, he drove with this puppy and he met me halfway from his house and my house. We met in the Cracker Barrel parking lot in Hamburg. He took, he, he took the puppy out of the car. And I fell to my knees crying. The puppy came running up to me, sat on my lap, and proceeded to give me kisses and lick my face. And it was love at first sight. I then asked the breeder, what's the puppy's name? Now get ready for this. Are you all ready for this? Ooh, I'm getting goose pimples. He said to me, her name is Atina. And I, I was awestruck, to say the least. She was imported from Kosovo. Our wonderful Pastor Remy came from Kosovo. Can, can you imagine that? I mean, what are the chances? What are the chances? You can't make this stuff up. No, I can't. <laughs> so, during that whole time I was alone, Pastor Rini was praying for me. And he kept telling me when I was alone and depressed that God has something very special for you. God has big plans for you. Well, he sure did. Her name is Atina. And she's my puppy 
that God blessed me with. I needed her and she needed me. And I thank every day, I thank God every day for Atina. Her full name is Atina Ode Radhavana Plavsika. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I asked Pastor Remy what her name meant. He said, Atina equals, means Athena, God coming from a brilliant mind, goddess of wisdom, and also the other part of her name meant rejoice and have joy, be joyful. So God works in mysterious ways, but he always comes through. And I'm so excited and ready to be baptized to celebrate my new life with and for Jesus Christ and have my past sinful life be washed away. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Jesus, for what you did for all of us by dying on the cross for our sins. Amen. I thank you, Pastor Remy, for being the great pastor you are, blessing the lives of so many people and doing such a wonderful job feeding us God's word. I thank you, church family, for praying for me and believing in me. And I thank God for blessing me with this beautiful, precious puppy that I now have, whose name is Atina. So God works in mysterious ways. Some people need a dog. Some people need a cat. Some people need a spouse. Some pe God knows. But uh, we, all, we all need Jesus. But he, he created us in a different ways. And he created us with a purpose. So if we follow him, he's going to give us the desires of our heart. And uh, it's so privileged and, and a blessing to have seen Jen, uh, really seen God move in a new ways and yes. God is still working in all of us and in Jen mm -hmm. so uh, can, to continue uplift one another in prayer and I was uh, yeah thrilled when she said that she wanted to name her dog Athena I said but Athena means Athena it's mm -hmm. just a yeah it's just a, uh, a Yugoslavian n uh, way to say uh, Athena it's Athena so so uh, God was working in that and uh, the dog is very very sweet by the way I went to see her dog. It's very sweet. Anyway, let's pray for, for uh, Jen. And uh, Lord, we continue to pray for Jen. We, Lord, bless her, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you're working in mysterious ways, Lord Jesus. Sometimes it's hard for us to have patience. But, Lord Jesus, help us to be patient, Lord, as we know that uh, you have something, always good things for us, in store for us, Lord. Yes. May we seek your face, Lord, in times of turmoil, in times of rejoicing. May we, Lord Jesus, embrace what you have for us. And when uh, we don't feel that we are having, Lord, may we pray to have it, because you are already uh, given, you will already, you will soon give it to us. How is that, Lord? So I pray that you will fill her with your spirit, fill her new, fresh, new fresh new Lord baptize her with holy holy ghost yeah. holy ghost we invite you here Jesus yeah. we call upon to you Jesus thank you Lord bless her Lord bless her emotions physical body all of her areas Lord touch her new Lord may that water that we will baptize her in Aaron may you be anointed by your spirit Lord that's what we want Jesus you want you yes Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's move on with our, sec uh, with our next phrase of baptizing these two wonderful ladies. And my daughter said that, Daddy, Daddy, I feel that the Lord wants me to be baptized too. I said, okay, honey. So my daughter may join us in baptism too. And so, hey, if anyone else wants to be dunked, be chilly and come here freezing. You want to go first and check the water? Um, I already did. Okay. Hey, God bless. That was 45 minutes ago. Yeah. God bless you all. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you all and thank you for joining us.